दृष्टिभंगी बजेटे देखते पेलना पदक्षेप नहीं गरीब मध्य बैषम्य और कम बेटुक शिल्पति तेजने तेरे नतून कर चपान से बड़ कथा हम दरिद्र व्यक्ति जरा मध्यबित्त निम्नबित्त तरह हाथ आय बृद्धिर तरह कर्मसंस्थान बृद्धिर सूझ सुविधा गुरु और बसि आशा कर देखते पाई धन्यवाद कथा डर देवाशीष मजुमदार संगे विशिष्ट अर्थनीतिद डर देवाशीष मजुमदार जेम जी प्रत्याशा पूरण हलो ना एरपर नजर रखब सर बेंगल चेम्बर अब कमार्स शिल्पति सांबा बैठके नजर रखब सर inclusive development climate check climate action and energy transition export push and digital economy these are the five uh, uh, policy directions the, there is nothing to argue about this these are all good policy directions to undertake and uh, probably the right ones to undertake one of the good things about the budget is that it has uh, brought in focus on infrastructure and over the last uh, two years as uh, we all know the infrastructure area had uh, seen a major slow down so we feel that this uh, focus on infrastructure through gati shakti uh, has the potential to re energize that sector and the multiplier effect it has in many other areas i will now uh, request uh, my uh, colleagues here to comment on it uh, uh, one by one their uh, own views so may i So, can I start with Mr. Vivek Jalan? As regards GST, there has not been any significant announcement in the budget speech of the finance minister. But just now, I am seeing the fine prints of the finance bill, and by reading the fine print, there has been quite substantial changes in GST. especially with respect to input tax credit we know last time in the budget the input tax credit was restricted to the extent in which the supply of files is written now there is a new clause 16 2a b whereby there is a further restriction of input tax credit only to the extent the department allows the recipient to takes the input tax credit so this i feel is a Uh, a big change as far as the fine prints of the finance bill is concerned and more as we read the finance bill it will be further clear on the gst aspect i am dr alok roy from uh, chamber past president and uh, healthcare uh, first of all for health i know that health minister uh, finance minister has presented a very robust budget for the Uh, fiscal health of the country fiscal health seems to be on the right track because uh, they have what a gati and all that gati shakti but as far as health care is concerned i think it has been skipped completely and especially when we are coming out of pandemic we are very very seriously disappointed though we would like to see some more uh, uh, fine prints but the very fact that at this point of time when the public health needs strengthening the uh, the device manufacturing need more strengthening the uh, the gst input credit because uh, and the custom duty needed some help so we have been avoided on all fronts i don't know the fine prints but whatever i've heard so far looks like that country's health fiscal health is good but people's health may not be good with this budget thank you this is arnab basu uh, vice president of the chamber uh, i think there was a significant push in the budget 
towards a digital India. And I think whether it is around, you know, drone manufacturing and use of drones, around land record digitization, uh, around an open platform for digital health, obviously at a policy level, uh, the 75 digital bank units in 75 districts, uh, the support for digital payments and lending uh, platforms, and also the digital rupee based on blockchain technologies. I think it was a big push. I think the digital ecosystem uh, also saw some policy level employability. Uh, I would like to hi highlight two points uh, which were quite uh, good uh, and welcome steps, I would say. The first one is the data centers being given infrastructure status. It would allow long-term uh, uh, capital intensive investments into the sector and it will allow uh, better repayment facilities for building up data centers because data centers will never make money on day one. The other one is the 30% tax on uh, transfer of digital assets, uh, which would obviously cover uh, cryptocurrencies and also NFT-based transactions. Uh, I think that's also a very welcome move. Um, this is Aniruddho Lahiri. I am a former president of the chamber. Um, I think what uh, the, the president said, pretty well sums up uh, our views, uh, the Chamber's views on this budget. Uh, I would just like to add my own uh, reaction and that is that I think, you know, there is well intended, the measures that she talked about, the finance minister talked about, well intended, but they have not been powered enough. It lacks the commitment, you know, in terms of its implementation and, 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 and getting the results out, you know. It's very weakly powered. The other thing is, uh, you know, which Dr. Alok Roy said, I'm very surprised that coming out of such a huge uh, pandemic for two years, it's rocked the world. And we're just about seeing somehow a neck up of the water and we have already forgotten it and, and there is no talk about what, what we will do in the future or what is intended to be done to make the uh, health area more robust. There is no mention of it at all. And then, as uh, Mr. Jalan said, we have to read the fine, fine print, the fine print part. I think GST seems to be, is very insipid, there's nothing at all. And uh, I'm also disappointed that there's an intention to make India uh, an uh, exporting country, but there's not enough in the budget to say how India is becoming, Indian industry will become competitive in terms of uh, exports. So, it's on the whole, I'd say it's, it's quite disappointing. My name is Timi Chatterjee. I am the chairman of the indirect tax committee. Before I tell you anything, I would like to highlight few things from the budget which I have calculated. The country's GDP has now reached 22-23 to 258 lakh crores. In terms of USD, it is 3.4 trillion dollar, 3,400 billion dollar. If you convert it to Indian rupee, it comes to 248 lakh crores. Few years back, it was around 225 lakh crores. This has been calculated based on 8.5% growth, real-term growth. This is one good point. Second problem point is that countries export growth. This year, 
already we have achieved 25% growth in terms of dollar and it is touching to 400 billion dollar 100 percent and government has fixed a target of 500 billion dollar in 22-23 with 258 billion dollar on service that means if you consider merchandise and service it is likely to touch 750 billion dollar in 22-23 the most problematic issue in the whole budget, probably many people have not taken into consideration, is the inflation, which is quite high, not only in India, but also in other developed and developing countries. And most importantly, the crude price. If you go through yesterday's presentations, on financial budget, the entire budget has been calculated based on a crude price of 70 to 75 dollar per barrel. Against yesterday's price was 91 rupee, 91 uh, dollar. There is a huge gap, and this gap, if it is not subsides is going to create further inflation in the market. That is not informed in the budget. That this budget has been prepared, I have seen yesterday's memorandum submitted to the parliament by the chief economic advisor and he has clearly written that this budget has been prepared based on 70 to 75 dollar per barrel. This is a most important issue which we have to think rather than thinking 2%, 3% plus minus here and there. And you must have seen the country's expenditure is 40 lakh crores in rupee, out of which 16 lakh crores is to be taken from the market by way of borrowing. That means during 22-23, central government will be the major borrower from the banks not you and me and other private players. As a result, borrowing cost will increase. And I am telling you, within a month, you will find the interest rate will increase. Within not month, within 10 to 15 days, interest rate will increase at least by 25 to 50 basis points. The senior citizen has the option to be happy because their interest on fixed deposit will, is going to increase at least 25 to 50 basis points. But it will have its impact on the industry. So this is a very important point. And my submissions to the press and to all of you, that time has come when you have to take it out, income tax, GST, custom from the budget. Because in the last 61 years, your income tax act by and large streamlined. GST power has been given to the GST council. So the central government has really nothing to do. Rather, the government should come out with the annual reform budget. That will take care of the capital expenditures, investments, borrowing, etc. Et so those are the standard directions, rate 2%, 5%. It can be done through notifications. It thought that there is no need to come to the parliament for presenting a budget. Otherwise, the budget, there are very important good things. That is project import. You all know, whenever we go for set up a 3,000 crores, 4,000 crore project with 200, 300 or 1,000 crores imports, if we have to pay custom duty on each and every item, it will increase to 50 to 16%. Now the government has said that in case of project, you just pay 7.5% basic custom duty, you are released. That means for all materials, suppose if you are going to set up a thermal power plant, only 7.5% fixed rate and you can get all the imports at 7 percent That is a very, very important point. Secondly is the GST collections which has reached 1.4 lakh crores. That is a very, very important thing and I am telling you, by November, 
the GST collection will cross 1.50 lakh crores easily if we do not face third or fourth COVID issues. So there are, there are basic issues which have been rightly taken care of and my other speakers have already dealt with. But the major issue to the country is fiscal deficit which you have to accept because of the COVID 6.4%. But crude price, which is not in our hand, is really damaging the whole issues at a large. That is my submissions. And everything depends on crude price. It, if it comes down, obviously it is beneficial to us. If it goes up, government has hardly any options to increase price at, the, at market rate. So naturally, all the oil marketing companies will suffer a huge loss. You must have seen ONGC is showing negative. What is the basic reason? Not for budget. It is only for the crude price. At the crude price they reduce, ONGC and other companies, those oil marketing, BPCL and others would have so much higher. Because they know they have to bear such a huge loss. So these are my uh, submissions. And uh, otherwise I personally feel that it is a result oriented and there is nothing to do much about income tax, custom, service tax in the budget. Those days are gone. You only talk about the reforms area of which, what you are going to. One area why I expected that the commercial dispute settlement scheme should be eased. Although they have talked about the uh, IBC and arbitration issues in so India it takes a decade to settle a commercial claim and that is one of the reasons for which the foreign institutional investors FDI do not want to come very easily they know getting settlement is a big issue and I think time has come to totally revamp the entire legal systems legal procedure code we have two procedure code so that within six months we can settle all the commercial claims. I am not talking about your litigations, criminal, all these things. Commercial claims it can take. I was in Dubai. I found commercial claims are settled within seven days. Either you have to go to the jail or you have to It will pay. take uh, some time for us so to get there. That is, but these are the things yeah. we expect from the budget. Not 2% or 3% plus minus surcharge. Let's hear from Mr. Saha. Thank you very much. Sorry, I took a little more time, but I have expanded. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, my name is Pulak Shah. I am co-chairman of the Indirect Tax Committee of Bengal Chamber of Commerce. So what, uh, uh, what we have noticed that the Honorable Finance Minister, while placing the budget, did not utter anything much about the GST and all these things. And it is what is the trend, what we are observing for the last couple of years, that in the budget, uh, the Finance Minister does not speak about the taxation, everything we get into the bill. So I was just reading the bill, just flipping, not reading, rather flipping through the bills. Three important things which has come to my notice. That is the first important thing which has come up for ease of doing business. As you all are aware that the for a particular financial year, credit can be taken while filing of your return for the month of September in the next year. So what is the timeline for filing of the return for September is 20th of October. Now it has been extended. This time it has been that the entire year law has been amended. Now the due date for September would be 30th November. So this is a very, very welcome change and this is a very, very uh, good thing which has been proposed. And uh, this is nothing but a ease of doing business. Second thing is very one thing that how this uh, you know that to avoid fraud and fraudulent activities they were always been serious and and this time they brought in that if you do not file your outward supply return for a particular month only for a particular month next month you would be deferred to file your outward supply not the return forget about return even. The, your outward supply which you file by 10th of the next month and the third most important thing there was a lot of litigations what we have seen in the earlier regime as well that that whether when we when we 
avail a credit, but we have not utilized it, whether interest is payable or not. In the earlier regime, the law got amended. There were Supreme Court decisions also. There, there was a diver, diverse uh, decision in the Supreme Court and because of that, the law has been amended. And based on the previous law, this time so, they have not brought in any amendment and even in the GST law also, there has been a litigation. And the GST council in principle agreed, but there was no formal announcement in this regard in the law. This time, the, this is the section 50 which has been amended, the proposal for amendment of section 50, wherein it is stated that if the credit has been wrongly availed and utilized, that means if you do not utilize, no interest is payable. So, it is now clear that's a very welcome change. That is the only two, three things and there are a couple of other changes, lot of changes because of the time constraint. Uh, this is uh, we are not in a position to tell you what are the major changes have come up these are the most three important changes I thought it fit to share with you thank you very much yeah this is Simapit Singh co-chairman education committee of the Bengal chamber uh, coming to education side they have mentioned that uh, uh, the ITI will have skill code digital skill course under the national uh, skill qualification framework digital university will be set up under network hub and scope model and one class and one TV channel for each uh, mentioned about setting up institution in the gift city which is a very good welcome uh, approach and the government identified a few areas for growth like artificial intelligence, EV, green energy, drone so indirectly the education institutions and other research centers will benefit the, by the way of in incoming research and grant in these areas. Thank you. Uh, we would also like to uh, hear from the Chairman of our Economic Affairs Committee, uh, Professor Dr. Ajitava Raichaudhari. So we will uh, uh, can uh, highlight his screen. Uh, can you spotlight uh, Professor Ajitava Chaudhary? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, I look from somewhat a macroeconomic angle. And as the finance minister very clearly said, she has two main goals. One goal is the infrastructure, the Bharti Shakti scheme. And in fact, uh, much of her speech on uh, what is the main growth driving factor is infrastructure. And there are uh, various schemes which are mentioned. It's basically continuity of the previous schemes. But I think rightly so, Infrastructure is a double-edged show, so uh, in the sense that it provides employment, so it will increase uh, employment and demand. And on the other hand, its long-term growth depends on your infrastructure. So there is nothing wrong in stressing the infrastructure. And I would say it's a continuity from the previous year's budget. And there are, uh, you know, renewed stress on the infrastructure through the Bhati Shakti scheme, taking the states on board as well, which is a good thing in a way. The other thing, and I would say the digital part of this, which has been uh, mentioned several ways, that the country is, uh, will move towards digital platform more. Uh, and as a result, at least uh, for the agricultural sector, more digital information will be beneficial for the agriculture maybe. And let's see how it goes, but that's a right move in the right direction. We need that. But it's not new in a sense. It's continuity and renewed stress on the infrastructure in this budget. The other part is inclusive growth. Mentioned several times that we care for, uh, you know, the backward classes, the women. Again, I would say it's just topping up uh, the continuing budget to a certain extent. No new scheme, what uh, very significant uh, for that matter, has been announced in this. But renewed stress on inclusive growth and uh, nothing wrong in that again. But I stress it's not a new or significantly new schemes which are announced and the third part which is mentioned is clearly the climate uh, issue especially after India participated as you know in this COP22 and there are problems uh, India is uh, held as a uh, culprit because they wanted the coal industry to continue but anyway there is a lot of mention about green green investment projects will be which will be green and again this is on the right direction but uh, 
nothing dramatic for that matter. If you ask whether there is any dramatic change, no. But uh, it's an absolutely right thing to mention that the climate is an issue and that has been taken care of. The two other things which I want to mention, and this is very important, and our tax committee has mentioned the tax and other issues. I don't want to touch on this. The very important step of taxing transfer of crypto as digital asset, 30% tax. Unless you do that, even you know, common uh, lower middle class are lured by this extraordinary profit you might have in cryptocurrency. Number of uh, countries are taking steps and it's about time India should have taken step and India has through this budget. I'm very happy about that. And there's a digital currency which will be promoted this year from the Reserve Bank of India, which I think is absolutely need of the hour. And uh, this is a very important and right step in that direction. And uh, in fact, one more thing is uh, everywhere there is a touch that the R&D and a lab to land model or lab to uh, health sector, education sector, whatever is innovated within the uh, ecosystem of universities and institutes will be shared in the government. This is, a, this is how the Western countries have developed. Uh, we need the same path. And there is this, again, nothing new, but this stress is unmistakable. That digital